everybody hope all you're all you okay it's yet another beautiful day with uh, new hopes and hope everything is fine uh today i want us to share something little uh with us as i say that i do i deal with children parenting uh first time mothers and all that to do with children uh today i want us to discuss something little uh, i want us to share some tips on how you can you can put your baby to sleep easily sleeping alone sometimes when the babies when our kids reach from the age of two three four we have to put them in their separate room so that they can sleep alone they can start getting used to sleeping alone you find that they sometimes it's very difficult if you have been sleeping with a child and then putting that child to bed alone it is sometimes difficult but uh, i want us to share some tips on how to to to, to put your, ch your child to sleep in a very simple manner. Uh, the first thing that I'll encourage all the parents to do is to be consistent until the child owns the independence of sleeping alone. You know that what I mean by being consistent, don't just, you put your, bed, your, bed to, your, your kid to bed today and then because the kid cried or the kid did something at night, tomorrow you carry the baby back to your bedroom and sleep with her. Then the other, the other day you again take the baby to, to the room to sleep alone. No, as parents don't do that. But what you should do, be consistent. Take your kids uh, uh, every, every, every night, take, the, take your kid to the bedroom and let your kid sleep alone. Uh, because uh, the other thing, it's, it's a gradual process. It's not something that will just happen overnight. It's a gradual process, so it will take time. So be consistent, and as it takes time, just continue, continue taking your your, your kids to sleep. Uh, so so that so that the kid can get used to that to that to that routine. And the other thing also you can do is be creative. You know when you are taking your kids to to to, to bed. First of all, the room for your baby should be welcoming you should not know there are some rooms whereby you 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 kids you put scary pictures you put things that are not really friendly so make sure that your room is uh uh is welcoming and it is uh it's a it's a good room a nice room and it is uh, it's big enough so that your kid can have enough space to sleep in a comfortable way uh, so be creative and even if you're taking your baby to sleep read for her a nice story in my some of my previous videos i was talking about why kids get scared a lot it's because of sometimes with the, the stories that we read to them we can we find that we read stories that are so scary then what do you expect you find that you 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 are reading your, your kid a very scary story and you expect that kid to 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 sleep, to sleep alone so make sure that you don't you don't you don't put scary thing in your room make sure that the 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 room is safe and it's conducive for your baby to sleep uh the other thing also i also like to 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 to, to encourage parents is make sure you are there with your kid don't just uh, put your kid to the room and then you just leave your kid there alone until the, the, the baby goes to sleep be with your kid make sure that you are with that kid until the kid falls asleep so meanwhile you can talk to her you can say a prayer after you have brushed their teeth of course you can say a prayer you can read their book so that you can encourage them to sleep alone so you can be with them until they fall asleep when they fall asleep then you you can go you can go back to the other to your room the other thing which i was also caught on is attaching emotions to, to your children you know like my daughter where the first, I think the first two weeks when I was taking her to the bedroom, she could wake up in the middle of the night, then she comes back crying to my room. So when she comes back crying to my room, I'm like, I feel sorry. Then I was like, okay, you come and sleep with me. But that is not the right thing that I've, I could have done. What we, we do and what I learned is take your kid back to the bedroom. So after I learned that, then I started taking, when she comes crying, then I escort her back to her room. So she developed another another behavior in the middle of the night. She could just shout, Mom, water. So I go and give her water. Then after something, Mom, I want to pee. You go and take her to pee. Then another time, Mom, there's a bug in my room. So find there are those distractions. So what I could do, I could just go, then I talk to her. But then I tell her that next time if you call me, I won't come. So I, I, it went like that, calling, sometimes I just keep quiet, I hear her, but I don't go. Then she calls and then she goes back to sleep. So we should not attach emotions when you are, when you are putting babies to sleep. You know, kids can sometimes also disturb 
So when you put your kids to sleep, don't attach the emotion, even if they cry. Let them cry for some time, then they will keep quiet. Unless it is too much, it's even disturbing you, then you can just go and see what's happening. But don't let that, because the kid is crying, then you carry the kid, you, you, you carry the kid to, 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 to come and sleep with you. That's not right. If a kid is crying, just go and calm that kid down and then put her to bed. And also, because my kid uh, was disturbing, Mama, I want to pee. Mama, I want water. Mama, I want this and this. Then you, you can go. What I could do, I could go and talk to her. You want some water? Okay, drink your water. is here. You want to go and pee? Okay, you go and pee. Then I won't, I won't, I won't come back till morning. So it went like that too, until she got used. And the other thing is also to appraise them, to encourage them. If you have spent, they have spent a night alone, in the morning, praise them, encourage them. Oh, you have done so good. You see, you have slept alone and nothing has happened. You are so good. You are a brave kid. You are a good kid. You are a smart kid. You see, you encourage them in that way. Then you find that if you keep encouraging them, if you keep encouraging them, you keep encouraging them, you find that they become, they get used, and then they, they, they continue sleeping alone. The other thing, parents, that I would like to also uh, share with you is don't put distractions in your room, in their room. You know, there are some parents that they can put a TV in their children's room. You have an iPad. You leave them to play with your phones and you have these games. This is not really advised as parents putting our kids to sleep. When our kids are, are around the age of three, four, five, then they, 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 they become now addicted to things because you have we have made them become addicted so if it's bedtime then make sure that those instructions don't go with them to the bedroom don't let your kid go to the with the ipad don't let your kid go with your phone don't let your kid go with any electronic thing to the bedroom if it's time for sleeping after they have said their prayers after they've read them a book then make sure that they go to sleep and they don't get distracted and that's why we get problems especially with your teenagers you find that they stay long nights with their phones, they stay long nights with their iPads because of what? Because when we're bringing up the children, we made them get used to that. that that's a normal life. No, that's not right, parents. Let's try to encourage them not, not to take those gadgets in their bedroom. Uh, the other thing that, as parents, I would like us to also talk to, 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 to us on putting our baby, babies to sleep is light you know there are some there are some kids they don't they don't like darkness but also it's not advisable for kids to sleep when the room is too bright so make sure that also the lights of your bedroom their bedroom is dimmer it's not so bright it's dim and if they can if they can handle try to put off the lights when they're going to sleep put off the lights but those who cannot handle at, at all then put dim lights make sure that the lights are very dim and also in their bedroom put some decorative things that they like the stars the moon those galaxies things that can encourage them and they can and they can enjoy while they are they are sleeping so what you can do don't put lights in their bedroom let make sure that the lights are not so bright if if you if i told you to, to leave the lights on make sure then you have dim lights because if you put if you put lights when they are too bright it will also affect them they may not fall asleep so soon so make sure that the lights are not very bright uh, the other tip that i would like also to share with parents on putting babies to sleep is don't use sleep as punishment when you're putting your baby to sleep, don't put it, don't make it as a punch. No, because you've done this, you're going to sleep. Then you put the baby in the bedroom and then you lock the room. No, that's not right. Let's not use sleep as a what? Uh, as a punishment. Let sleep be uh, something that it's a routine. We sleep because we're supposed to sleep. But don't force, because now the kid will go to the bedroom because it's a punishment. So she'll go there, she may sleep, and then maybe she may, she may even wake up after some time, then the sleep disappears. Because it was a punishment, it's not a routine. So let's not make it as a punishment, let's make it as a routine. Some, sometimes we ground our kids, but when you ground them, then let's also, also let's limit the grounding how why, why are we doing and the, what, what 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 are we telling them you just ground your kid and put go to the bedroom and you have to sleep you have to do this so make sure that you don't use it as a punishment uh also the, the other thing that I'll, I'll also like to 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 share with you with you with you parents is not to 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 make your bedroom like 
you know, like story storytelling. You find your kid comes in the bedroom, the other kid comes, and the other kid also comes. So you're like you you have put all your kids in the in the in the same in the same in the same room. Then you start sharing stories. This tells this this tells, and yet it's time to sleep. So the kids will not will not know if it's time to sleep or it's time for storytelling. So make sure that you. You put your kids to sleep if it's time for sleeping. But if it's time for storytelling, then you can do it in the living room or somewhere else. So parents, these are some of the tips that I wanted us to share with you. Some tips which can help you to put your babies to sleep, your kids to sleep. And it will help you because it's a routine. Let it be a routine and be consistent as I've said. Then our kids will be sleeping nicely and they'll get used to sleep in their bedroom. But don't sleep with your kids when they're of age to sleep in their bedroom. Thank you so much and see you in the next video. Bye for now.